Hey, what's up guys? It's Chibber here and today I'm going to teach you guys how to set up the ultimate Counter-Strike 2 config. So I have view model settings, I have radar settings, I have everything that you need to get started. Also, I have the best settings to get the most frames possible. All right, let's go. If you're going to be playing native res, just put it on your regular resolution. Make sure it's on full screen and not full screen windowed because that can add some latency. And for refresh rate, put it up to the maximum refresh rate of your monitor. All right, and then go to advanced video. For boost player contrast, you always want to have this on. It just makes it a little bit easier to see enemies pretty much in any situation. V sync adds latency so i would always turn that off so obviously you can turn it off but it adds a lot of jagginess to like the wires up here and it makes things look a little little rough obviously you can put it on eight times which makes it look super crisp, but obviously it does hurt your performance. So I think 2X is probably the best middle ground. For global shadow quality, if you put it on low, you can't really see the animations of the shadows. So this actually puts you at a big disadvantage where you have less info to work with. If you put it up to medium, it's a little bit better, but it's not super clean. High is the recommended where you can pretty much see every little detail. You can see the thing moving around. I'd say high is probably the best bang for your buck. For texture filtering mode with 2X, I'm getting about 425 frames a second-ish with lows of down to 100. Actually, the frame rates are very comparable. It's a little bit lower. Yeah, it really seems like the setting doesn't really matter too much, at least for my PC. But I'd say 2X or 4X, depending on your PC. I mean, whatever it recommends. For shader detail, you want to have this on high so you can see the best shadows possible. For particle detail, so here, I'll just throw a Molotov. And as you guys can see, the fire can be kind of hard to see through. But if we put it on low and then throw a Molotov, oh, it's pretty much the same. Wow. To be honest, high versus low doesn't really make the biggest difference i'd say just go for something in the middle you can do medium or high i'll just go with high yeah for ambient occlusion you can just disable this to free up a little bit of extra performance for high dynamic range i would recommend putting this on performance and then for fidelity fx this is essentially like amd upscaling so if you put it on performance now obviously oh my god the game looks so bad it looks so pixelated my frame rate doesn't really it seems to be around the same it looks so bad though everything is just so pixelated let's compare it to quality quality definitely looks a lot better and it seems like the frames are around the same and then if we just straight up turn it off frame rate's pretty much the same uh, actually the frame rate's a little bit lower but the game looks way 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 crisper so i mean this setting is just if you're on a lower end pc and you're really struggling you could put this on quality balance or if your pc is really struggling you can try performance and then nvidia low latency is kind of a weird one typically for a lot of games this does a really good job of reducing latency as much as possible but i've noticed in cs2 especially you know with the servers and everything and the sub tick rate it seems to add more latency if you guys want to use it just be my guest and try it out and let me know your findings in the comments but personally for the most traditional counter-strike experience just put it on disabled hopefully in the future valve fixes it let's talk audio so master volume just crank it up to 100 if it's too loud you can turn it down a little bit okay so eq profile is kind of weird so there's natural which kind of sounds normal there's crisp which can make footsteps sound a little bit louder also, it makes the gun sounds louder. But to be honest, like if I were to actually play with this, like I would go deaf after like two games. And then smooth is kind of in the middle where you can still hear footsteps that are a little bit quieter. And then when you shoot, you know, it's a little less harsh because I think they bring down the, the highs and the mids. So crisp enhances the mid and high frequency bands. Smooth reduces the mid and high frequencies. You can either go with those two or you can just use natural because that's pretty much what CSGO is like. And then LR isolation, this one's kind of interesting. Left, behind, right. It's pretty much the audio you would expect from Counter-Strike. Let's just turn this up to 10%. Left, behind, right. Yeah, it seems to actually enhance the surround sound a little bit. All right, just for fun, let's crank it up to 100 and see what happens. This is, there's no way that this is gonna be good. Left, behind, right. Yeah, honestly, that's a little bit too much for me. So I think 10% is a good middle ground. Just leave on perspective correction. Streamline push to talk. This is another one. So, so every time you press the push to talk key, if your computer keeps hiccuping or lagging, uh, I'd say just turn this on. But as for music though, main menu volume, I like to just leave it on zero because I just don't like to hear the main menu volume. Round start volume doesn't really matter. Round action volume doesn't matter. I like to leave these on zero. Round end volume, you can leave it up, but like 30, 40%, you know, make sure it's not too loud. 
MVP volume, crank it up to 100. <laughs> no, uh, leave it at a reasonable level, like 30. Bomb hostage volume, 20. 10 second warning volume. So this one is absolutely essential. So you wanna make sure it's loud enough to where you can hear the start of the music, but not too loud to where you can't hear footsteps. So I'd say anywhere between 10 and 15% is perfect. And then death camera volume, irrelevant. Game settings. Now we're getting into the juicy meat and potatoes. You always want to enable the developer console. So you can just press the tilt key, open this bad boy up, you know, say something like that. The console has so many incredibly useful commands and we'll be going into it pretty soon, but first install the Counter-Strike Workshop tools. So depending on if you actually want to mess around with the Hammer Editor V2, just make sure to enable this. But if not, then just leave it off. For HUD scale, so if you max it out, the HUD is a little bit too unwieldy. It takes up a little bit too much of your screen. And then when you make it too small, everything is just so tiny. So I'd say 0.99 to 1.03, anywhere within that is pretty reasonable because it's big enough to be readable but it's not too distracting and then for your HUD color you can do any color you want so team color kind of either gives you yellow or blue depending on if you're on T or CT which is kind of interesting but personally since I do have the Pandora's boxes I just prefer to use purple because it just matches everything so much better if you have like a red or blue or whatever themed inventory this can be a great addition to it they have delay sniper rifle unscope after shot so let's just turn this on and grab ourselves an op by default it's pretty much the same as it was in CSGO. And then when you turn it on, when you shoot, you stay scoped in for like an extra second. So you can, you have more time to see if you hit the shot or not. However, though, this can lead to some awkward scenarios. Of course, all this stuff does come down to personal preference. If you like it, then use it. If not, then don't use it. Another interesting one is auto resume after sniper shots. So let's just turn this off. When you shoot after scoping, it doesn't scope you back in. Like personally, I might actually try this for a little bit because I... It is kind of an interesting idea because normally you would automatically like after shooting you would it would scope you back into where you were before. So I mean if you're holding an angle and you need to like quickly repeat it and you don't want to make like all that extra noise. I mean you shot an op like there's no way you're trying to be stealthy but like if you just want to do like a one and done kind of thing this makes it so you don't have to quick switch to cancel the animation. The radar is very very underlooked. By default it's kind of like this where you can only see in the general vicinity of where you're at so from here you can only really see part Art of donut however though if you press tab which does block your screen you can see the entire map but i think there's a way to do it better okay so increase the radar size to you don't have to max it out just something reasonable like 1.2 zoom it all the way out turn off radar centers the player i mean you don't see literally everything but if your teammates start pushing out a and you see four red dots you can immediately start pushing up and you don't have to ask your teammates for info or whatever because you can see it all right there on your radar because having a radar where you can see the entire map at all times is is one of the most underutilized things in Counter-Strike. Crosser is kind of interesting because now they have classic, classic static, and legacy. So classic is basically like the super useless crosshair. <laughs> Yeah, so like a crosshair like this is not really that useful, in my opinion, unless you have a center dot. Now, if you have a center dot, it's a little bit more useful, but personally, I find it to be a little bit too distracting. Oh yeah, legacy is kind of similar, but when you move, you don't really get a penalty. But when you shoot, that's when your crosshair really starts to move. If you're a newer player and you want to just have a little bit more visual feedback, like when you're going to be accurate or not, this can definitely be a good way to do it. But once you get to a certain point though, classic static is by far the best because no matter what, your crosshair will always stay the same. And the whole point of a crosshair is to be able to know where the center of your screen is. And if you have one that's super reliable, that's just always in the same position, you're overall going to have a much better time. You can change the length if you want to have a huge honker of a crosshair. Personally, I like to keep it at some reasonable level. Thickness, you can make it extra thick or you can make it nice and thin. The gap kind of affects the, the gap in the middle of your screen. So if you want to have a huge gap, you can do that. But I'd say with a huge gap, you're probably better off having a center dot as well. Because then at least you have some reference point for the exact center. Personally, though, I prefer to play without the center dot and then i like to make the gap around the size you know kind of like this so there's a hole in the middle of your crosshair and that's where you want to aim for the head basically outline so this can just make it a little bit easier to see in certain situations let's just say i'm using a white crosshair and i'm looking at the sun you can't see the crosshair at all right now however if i put an outline on it then the crosshair becomes immediately visible. So it can basically just help make your crosshair, regardless of color, make it more visible. T style is kind of interesting because it kind of makes your crosshair like, it makes it like an uppercase T instead of a lowercase T. Uh, for me though, I don't really find it to be super useful. I like it to be more of a circle than a half circle. But if this is your favorite style of crosshair, then by all means, go for it. Because that's the beauty of Counter-Strike. You can literally do whatever you want. For me, I like to just reduce the red until we have kind of a bluish crosshair. Alpha essentially, it allows you to change 
change the opacity so you can either have it be almost invisible or fully visible. Again, it's all personal preference. And then follow recoil is one of the most interesting new changes because instead of the crosshair staying the same no matter what, it actually follows your recoil. So wherever your bullets go, the crosshair will follow. If you're spraying, just try to keep the crosshair as close to the enemy as possible. But it's a little, uh, it's weird. It's a weird setting. Use it at your own risk. In CSGO, you needed a jump bind, but now, so walk right here into this corner, aim right here, and then essentially you want to just jump and let go of mouse button at around the same time. And if your character makes that little noise, then you know you did it correctly. The jump throws are 100% consistent without a bind, which is amazing. Now I got some view model settings. So if you type in view model underscore FOV, so I think you can put this on like 55 or something. So it basically zooms in your weapon so it takes up more of your screen. I find 90 to be like the best middle ground. It allows you to inspect your weapons and pretty much see the entire thing while standing still without, you know, being too overbearing. View model offset is the next one. There's the X, Y, and Z axis. Let's start off with X. So X determines how left or right it is. This is a little bit too much for me. So zero is kind of more in the middle. But I'd say like two is pretty good because it stays out of the way and you have a little bit more real estate in the center of your screen. And then when you inspect, you can still see the entire thing. Y essentially brings it forward and back. So if you do two, it looks like this. And then if you do negative two, it brings it farther back like so. It just depends because if you want something that takes up less of the screen, negative two could be great. But for me, since I do like to inspect the skins and I like to have it be similar to my old config, I do negative two. And then Z is actually the most impactful. So this affects the up and down axis. If you have it on two, you literally hold the gun like an absolute madman. <laughs> and then if you do negative two, it brings it down. But for me, like it's a little bit too low. So I like to go for kind of a, a middle ground. Uh, yeah, negative 0.7. There we go. For me, this is the best view model to inspect skins in Counter-Strike 2. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If the video was helpful, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts, and subscribe with the bell if you haven't already. Anyways, guys, stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. It's Turbo, and I'm out. Peace.